Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.1 Beta 4 has been out for a few days. I've been using it full time on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and wanted to share some new features that have been found since the initial release of the iOS 16.1 Beta 4 is out video I released the other day. So we found a few more things there and then I also wanted to share the overall experience of this update as well as what you had to say based off the YouTube community poll. There's 13,000 votes at the time of this video with 116 comments. I've read every single one to get an understanding of what iOS 16.1 beta 4 and iOS 16.0.2 is like. So we'll talk about that, read some of your comments a little bit later, and also talk about when to expect the next major iOS update released to the public. Now let's talk about a couple new features. Now the first thing is when you go to purchase an app, so you go into the app store, you either download an app you haven't installed before, maybe this one here, hit get, and install it, the interface has changed. So I have a screenshot of it here. You'll see what it looks here compared to what we have with iOS 16.0.2. So it looks a little bit different. You have a little bit larger graphic, it's easier to read, and it's just a slight redesign. So I think that's a nice change. Nothing huge, but something they've actually updated. Now also, if we go into the Shortcuts app, they've updated something there as well. If we go into Shortcuts, maybe we just go to New Shortcut, and within New Shortcut, tap on the top here, the little icon, you'll see all the different glyphs below and they've categorized them. So sometimes they have duplicates in the categories, but they've sort of loosely categorized these into devices, cameras and photos, gaming, connectivity, transportation, and so on. So we have a bunch of different categories now to make it a little bit easier. And of course we can just search for the symbol we're looking for as well. Now, the other day we had a new AirPods beta update. Now you need to be a developer in order to enable this. I've talked about this in other videos, but you have to connect to a computer. You have to go down and then enable developer settings. You can do that by plugging it into a computer, connecting through Xcode, one of the latest beta Xcodes, then going all the way to the bottom and then you'll see pre-release beta firmware for AirPods testing. If you go in there, you can enable it for whatever device you choose. Apple updated this to version 5B5040C, and it's available for AirPods 2, 3, AirPods Pro, AirPods Pro 2 or second generation, and AirPods Max. And this could be in order to fix an issue we're having with AirPods. And so there's a couple different issues with connectivity, it seems, at least with this beta and some recent versions, as well as a bug that seems to be there with Find My with the latest AirPods Pro second generation. Thanks to a viewer, Evan, that sent this in, and he actually said that you can't see your AirPods Pro to status within Find My on a Mac. And I was able to confirm this. It's not showing up on my Mac, and also apparently Apple technicians confirmed it when he complained about it to them. So it looks like this is something that will be resolved, and thanks to Evan Katz for sending that in. So hopefully they'll resolve that soon with a future update. It could be what that firmware update is for, and I tried to update it on the regular AirPods Pro or first generation, and let's see if it's updated yet. I've tried over and over for quite a while tonight, and what wasn't able to get it to go. So you'll see here, uh, it's finally updated to 5B40C. So it updated in between the time I started recording this video and the time you're watching this video. So that's pretty good. It's updated. Hopefully it fixes some connectivity issues. Of course, I'll have to test that, but there's nothing specific that Apple has said is actually in that update. Now within the Apple Watch, they've updated something here as well. Let me unlock it. So if we go into our Photos app, within Photos, some people are seeing a little pop-up explaining how you can actually make a watch face from your photo. So that's something that is showing up for some people and was sent over by my friend Brom from TechRender. So you may or may not be seeing that on Apple Watch. I'm not seeing that yet, but some people may be seeing that already. Now, as far as a couple new features that we're waiting for, 5G is coming to India. Now, this is something rolling out across India. However, it's not showing up on the latest iPhones yet, and that may require a software update. So when you go into your settings and then you go to cellular, and within your cellular data options, typically you'll have under voice and data the option to enable 5G. Now, 5G is apparently not showing up yet on many people's phones in India. It will require a software update from Apple or some sort of pushed update to enable that. So hopefully you'll see that soon as it's recently enabled in India. Apple can enable that. All of the modems are supposedly similar. So hopefully we'll see that very soon with a software update. Now with iOS 16.1, we gain live activities. That's something we've only seen a little bit with the TV app, with live sports, and also basically 
things like the timer. So if we go into the clock, we go to the timer, start a timer, then go to the lock screen, you'll see it on the lock screen. However, it's not there yet for different apps, but it's coming very soon. And I can show you one of those that I'm actually testing. So if we go over here and you'll see I have iEvent Timer, this is actually an app that announces events coming up. And within this app, if I go into custom and create a custom event, maybe within 24 hours from now, we'll add. And let's just make it maybe at 2 a.m. the next day. There we go. And we'll just name it new event. We'll hit save. And if we go home, it shows in the dynamic island. And then also on the lock screen as a, as a live activity. This is something we're going to see in more and more apps that will be enabled by developers as they're allowed to roll this out for iOS 16.1. So I want to just share that iEvent timer we'll have that update when it's available. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And there we go. And then you'll see it disappears. Now to go along with live activities, there's actually a setting for it that was in beta three, but I hadn't shared in previous update videos. So if we go into settings, go down to face ID and passcode. If we scroll down, you'll see that there's an option for live activities. It allows access when locked on the lock screen. This is something you can disable and will be more important, of course, when iOS 16.1 is out and we have live activities from different developers. So that's something we should see soon. And also satellite connectivity is already in the code of 16.1 beta four. Some of it was there with beta three, but even more with beta four. And thanks to my friend, Steve Moser, he pointed out some more of these with actual different photos and more on his Twitter account. So you can see changes, SOS buddy app icon and screens for trying out emergency SOS via satellite. So there's some new screens found within the code. Apple just needs to turn on the switch so we can try this and see what it actually looks like. So hopefully we'll see that maybe with the next beta or release. Now, as far as the overall experience with this, well, the first thing is iOS 16.0.2 has had a lot of complaints about battery, specifically on the new iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And so we should see an update for that very soon. So 16.0.2 most of the time seems to have poor battery for some, not for others, but I'm hearing that a lot. As far as overall bugs that I'm experiencing with 16.1 beta four, well, some things I'm experiencing, others I'm not, but one thing I see quite a bit is when I swipe home, it often stutters. A restart will fix this, but if I go in after a day or two, I swipe home, it will sort of stutter with the animation and then eventually swipe home. Also, I've had a lot of issues with photos sort of crashing on me. If I airdrop a photo to my device, sometimes it just locks up, crashes, becomes unresponsive and then I have to close out of the app, then go back in and then it works. Oftentimes this happens probably almost every time I airdrop something. So I see this a lot. Also, some people say haptic keyboard response is either lagging, not strong, or just not in sync in general with your touches. So some people are seeing that I haven't seen that on the newer phone, but maybe that's because it's newer. And unfortunately, people using CarPlay are still having issues with audio. So that's something that, again, needs to be fixed by Apple and probably will be soon. Additionally, we have crashing apps, different apps crashing, not just photos, but third party apps. And also some people have said VPNs, such as things like NordVPN, aren't working properly. So that may require an update because Apple could have changed some policy or maybe Apple will fix that with future updates. So some odd issues here and there, but in general, it seems to be good other than those specific issues. So not everyone is experiencing those. Now, aside from iOS 16.1 bugs, Apple needs to fix issues with the latest iPhones in general, more specifically the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. They've had issues not only with poor battery life, but also locking up, flickering displays when in low brightness, sort of the dark areas of the display, issues with CarPlay where people can't hear you when you're connected to CarPlay, and also issues with it just dropping Wi-Fi. It's been sort of a rocky launch of the latest iPhones. And of course, when you're launching new hardware and software and you're trying to optimize everything, that can be a huge task, but Apple definitely needs to fix these issues on such expensive devices. So I would imagine we'll see that pretty soon. Now on the iPad, one thing they've fixed is specific to wallpaper. So if we go into our settings, go down to wallpaper, go to choose a new wallpaper, 
and then we go to stills, you'll see we have a bunch of different options, but they have the little cloud icon there so you can download those. Prior to this update, they didn't seem to work properly. Now they seem to download quickly. So just like we have, and this is actually a little stuttery and slow, but just like we have on Mac OS, we can now download those wallpapers. You'll see now they're working. And hopefully they bring something like this to iOS where we have older wallpapers with light and dark mode. But we're still not seeing that yet. And Apple hasn't said anything about it. As far as overall performance with this, it seems to be pretty good other than when it's stuttering when you're swiping home. So those are the only issues I've had with that, but in general, performance seems to be pretty good. Things like opening the camera, if you wanna make sure you capture a photo quickly enough, just capture the photo, it seems to work fine. Going into different apps such as music or games seem to load quickly, although this is just reloading since I haven't opened it in a little bit, but seems to load like you would expect. It's nice and smooth and in general seems to be what you would expect. So that's good. Performance overall seems to be pretty good. And the overall heat of the device for me has been nice and cool. So most of the time it's staying cool to the touch just basically room temperature, doesn't feel warm at all, unless it's charging, of course, and making the battery warm. That's typical when charging, but seems to be nice and cool overall. As far as overall battery life, it seems to be okay and hit or miss. Typically, it's getting a little bit better, though, with Beta 4. If we go to our battery options here, you'll see it loads. Of course, I have 100% battery life on the newer phone, and if we go to the last 10 days, take a look at yesterday I had four hours and 13 minutes of screen on time at two hours and 51 minutes of screen off time I used about 65 percent of the battery today that I've been using it only two hours and 41 minutes and used about 40 percent of the battery it really depends on the day how I'm getting through it but it seemed to get better with beta 3 over time so the more I used it the better battery was over time so it seems to be doing the same thing again now to take a look at someone else's battery, again, Abishek sent in his battery life, so I always appreciate that. Let's take a look. And this is on an 11 Pro Max. He had four hours of screen on time, eight hours and 53 minutes of screen off time, and had about 50% of his battery used. The day after that was very similar, three hours and 35 minutes, and used less than 50%. So probably about eight hours of screen on time with regular usage. Of course, this phone's a couple years old and the battery could be degraded. He hasn't actually told me his battery health overall, but it seems to be doing quite well and is fairly consistent and using less, even though he typically uses the phone the same. So that's a good sign. It seems to be improving. Now back on the iPad, if we take a look at battery, go into settings, go down to battery, We'll take a look. Typically, I'm getting about five to six hours. So you'll see the other day I had two hours and 35 minutes of screen on time, 24 minutes of screen off time, and we're down to exactly 50%. So really not great. Maybe five hours of screen on time overall. However, we are expecting new iPads fairly soon. The overall experience on the iPad, though, has been very stable. I really have had no issues whatsoever, unless I'm in Stage Manager. I don't typically use that because I don't really like it, and it makes the screen feel smaller for me. So no issues there, I just turn it off. Now, as far as when to expect iOS 16.0.3, well, Mac Rumors has actually seen this in their analytics on their website. We thought maybe it was going to be this week, but since it hasn't been this week, typically I would expect it next week at some point. What day specifically, we don't know. It could be between Monday or Wednesday, and that's when I would expect to see it. Also, we can expect iOS 16.1, either Beta 5 or Release Candidate or RC. Expect one of those probably Tuesday, probably the beta on Tuesday with a public release either on Monday or the day after that. We don't really know 100%, but if we have beta 5, which I would suspect, and then maybe release candidate by the end of October is when I would expect iOS 16.1. So we don't have any specific dates from Apple just yet, but usually we'll see beta 5 or RC. If we see the RC, you can expect a final release that week or the next week. So that's what we're looking forward to. Of course, we're also waiting for iPadOS 16 to release to the public, as well as macOS 13 Ventura. We can expect those probably within the next few weeks as we expect some announcements from Apple for a new iPad, some new Macs, and more. So of course, I'll have full reviews of all of those once they're released. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.1 Beta 4, typically I would say if you're not already on the betas, I would hold off at this point. If you're trying to solve a problem you're having with iOS 16.0.2, typically going to a beta will just bring up some other bug that you're going to have to deal with. So 
I would probably wait till iOS 16.0.3 or the public release of iOS 16.1. Otherwise, you can try it out, use a computer to restore. If you have problems, just make sure you have a backup or either a secondary, maybe an older device to try that out on. Otherwise, I don't typically recommend them on your main device just now. Maybe when the next few betas, iOS 16.2 betas come out, you could try them then. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll and comments, let's take a look at the poll. And at the time of this video, I refresh this again, we're at 13,000 votes. 18% of you said that it's great. 5% say that it's terrible. 9% say it's okay, but has some bugs. 59% said they're using 16.0.2 or older and 8% are on 15.7 or older. So we're still at only 13,000 votes. Usually after a week, we get around 25,000, 24,000 votes. And based off this, we may see some of these numbers change, but it's looking pretty good overall. Now let's take a look at some of your comments. I chose them randomly. Let's go ahead and go into notes where I have them saved. And you'll see here's the first one. Manish Bansal says, hi Aaron, I'm using iOS 16.0.2 on my iPhone 10. Battery life is very poor. Phone sometimes flickers in very dark light, otherwise not noticeable in normal usage. Apple must fix flickering issues. Alexander Share says, I noticed the current public update for iPhone 14 Pro has an issue with the microphone where it can't pick up loud noises like a jet flying by. It just becomes really static and sometimes it doesn't happen. I'd like to know if it's a faulty mic on the iPhone or a bug. I was told by Apple that it might be a bug, but I don't know. Personally, I haven't heard of this before. It typically could be a bug early on. Apple has a lot of bugs in iPhone 14, 14 Pro, and the newest phones. So maybe wait for an update or so and then try it out, but I haven't experienced this. So let us know in the comments below if any of you are experiencing this other than just Alexander. Matt Mills says, 13 Pro Max, 16.1 Beta 4. Only issue I have with it are the battery and haptic keyboard feedback is lighter than it was on the public version, and I don't like it. I hope Apple gives us the option to choose how hard we want the feedback to be. I agree, I would love to see an option with that. Jeff says, I have an iPhone 12 and I've been using the beta iOS 16 since its release in June. My phone's battery life really suffered and seemed to cause my phone to overheat fairly easily. The current beta version has vastly improved the battery life on my phone and I haven't had any serious issues with overheating. So overall, I've been very happy with iOS 16.1 Beta 4. So that's everything with iOS 16.1 Beta 4. And of course, if you found anything else I haven't mentioned in this video or the previous video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.